Hi, this is Brother Richard, and today we're continuing with our lesson series, Prototokus Mystery, Part 422. We're continuing with the lesson, Dominion Theology. This will be Part 2. We're going to cover this lesson, the um, reality of the resurrection. Scripture teaches the coming of two great resurrections. The first is called the resurrection to life. The second is called the second death. Turn to Revelation 20, verse 6, and it gives us the distinction between the two resurrections. Blessed and holy is he that hath part in the first resurrection. On such the second death hath no power, but they shall be priests of God and of Christ and shall reign with him a thousand years. So we find that the resurrection will be a time in which everybody that participates will be a priest. Having said that, we see the distinction. <clears throat> Scripture speaks of a blessing on those that participate in the resurrection to life. Now, excuse me, let me jump in quickly here before yes. you get into that. Okay. <clears throat> so we've understood that the first resurrection has happened. Those who are mortal at the point of time when the first resurrection happens, do they immediately have a thousand years added to their life? So from that point, they're mortal mm -hmm. for a thousand years? Because of the conditions that right. exist in the resurrection. The resurrection to life. Okay. So life is going to, uh, it's going to expand. It's going to encompass all things. What you were designed to do, the, the degree to which you were designed to exist, is no limitation. It's been unlocked, essentially. Yes. So if somebody was, was normally to die, let's just say, the year following, he's 99 years old, he would normally die at 100, let's just say that. Mm -hmm. The moment this resurrection happens, he now lives for an extra thousand years. Before the resurrection. Okay, what exactly, what point does he live the extra thousand years? In what the Lord calls the regeneration. Remember it says things, things are going to spring out all of a sudden. Life okay, the is going to encompass everything, the desert will blossom as a rose. It says that the lame man will leap like a heart. Yes. The blind man yes. will see. Yes. That's the time that you're referring to right. where okay. life is bestowed on everything that's living and going to expand it to the degree to which it was designed right. to Thank expand. You. Yes. Okay, so that answers my question, Mr. Jones, with who is going to be ruling for that thousand years? We understand we just now heard that there's going to be priests there. So the priests will teach the people. Will the people be mandated to come to be taught? Or are they going to be free willed to come and go as they please? The scripture talks about depending upon where you are. The law shall go forth out of Zion. The Lord comes down, settles in Mount Zion in Jerusalem, and speaks a command that everybody where they are is going to hear and others are going to come so at the, on a global scale everybody is going to be open to be taught mm. and what are they going to be taught the ways of God which they've never been taught sure. so I'm imagining the kings um, maybe the priests as well but the kings together with the Lord mm -hmm. moving around the world mm -hmm. in the regeneration as you've called it followed by the priests who are now, or will then, begin teaching? Well, the priests won't follow anybody anywhere. The priests okay. would be in a central location. Their influence... All right, from, from the heavens? Uh, and from the earth. The camp of the, camp camp of of the saints. saints. Yeah. Camp yes. of the saints. Yes. That's my question. Uh, 
this idea that we have from a human perspective of teaching the Holy Spirit will give us a greater comprehension of how this is going to be done. What we're doing is presenting the reality of God to the creation in all its aspects. That's teaching. That's why God wants those who are going to be judges, directors, rather than rulers mm -hmm. over his creation because mm -hmm. he wants to present life he wants to present God's reality to the creation mm -hmm. without exception yes so <clears throat> how much teaching before they uh, they they receive a a, a position how okay. much teaching okay Josie they're, they're coming to be taught they're going to be taught until they reach what and then there's no limitation. Okay, but are they, they're progressing in their understanding. So what is their, will they be rewarded for, for maximizing? No, the, the, the goal is living. You're going to be taught how to live better and better and better and better and better and better. There's no end to it. So it's perpetual, yeah. Yeah, we read about that in Revelation. The mm -hmm. people who... Uh, are martyred, go up to the throne, they stand before the throne as priests, and then it says, he that dwelt on the throne shall dwell with them. He's teaching them. He's bringing them into greater and greater experiences in life. Life is light, life is God, God is light. Everything dovetails together. In the Daniel 8 scenario where we see the Protodicus priest in the heavens teaching a multitude <clears throat> does it look exactly the same as that that he's talking no because you're, you're doing a specific doctrine at that point you're inculcating these because he's been asked a question what's going to happen with this 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 and right. this so he's focusing on that. responding to the request okay. but teaching in general okay. is showing manifesting the things of god now just the, teaching does not just limited to speaking Sure, sure. It encompasses manifesting in different ways to an individual who is open to the. the you never heard the Holy Spirit speak to you, have you? Yes. Well, I'll say oh, consistently. Yes. No. No. He imparts understanding to us through perception and through understanding, yeah. through knowledge. So it's the way you're going to be doing sure. it. Yes. I'm glad you brought it all up. Hmm. Will there be open opportunity? for questions to be asked. Sure. Okay. Sure. They'll be asked and they'll be answered as immediately as they're, they're brought forth. Everything is done on a spiritual, not a physical level. <coughs> but let's go on. <coughs> Scripture teaches the first resurrection, in the first resurrection, all the righteous, new covenant dead in Christ will be raised to stand before him to receive rewards for the things done in this life. Now, this resurrection deals with those who have lived righteously, but they're not prototokis. They have not been brought to a point of adoption. The, that is all closed. What this deals with are those who are righteous on descending levels and being rewarded for the level that each individual has progressed to. Examples. Turn to Luke, 14th chapter, verse 12 to 14. Jesus here gives an example. Then said he also to him that bade him, he's been invited to a supper, when thou makest a dinner for or a supper, 
Call not thy friends, nor thy brother, nor thy brethren, neither thy kinsmen, nor thy rich neighbors, lest they also bid thee again, and a recompense be made thee. But when thou makest a feast, call the poor, the maimed, the lame, the blind, and thou shalt be blessed, for they cannot recompense thee, for thou shalt be recompensed at the resurrection of the just. So he's talking to people that are not going to rise to the level of adoption. He's talking to the average individual person who's going to be brought into the kingdom and occupy a lower place of authority. Which might be people of the saints, for example. Sure. This is a rich guy, but he's generous in his wealth. He lives according to the light that he understands, mm -hmm. dies. He's qualified for rewards. He's going to be in the level of heaven. At the return of the Lord, he's going to be, well, basically, <clears throat> he's going to be brought into the resurrection. In other words, brought back to life as he once lived in, in a glorified state. And he's going to be rewarded for the good things that he did. And he's going to put, be put in a position of authority. Why did you say brought back to life as he once lived? What do you mean? He's going to be brought back from the region in the heavens in which he's spiritually living. It's a space. Yeah. Okay. To the fullness. Remember, this is not a prototokis. Mm -hmm. To the fullness of the level in which he he's a, he's a des des desired right. to ascend to. Okay. He's living, when he's talking to the Lord, on a certain level. Mm -hmm. He may go beyond that level, he may not. But the level he's living on, the Lord says, you're going to be rewarded okay. if you do this. On the level that you are. Sure. So, he's not being being brought into a, 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 a state of condemnation or sin or anything else. He's being commanded. He says, use your wealth to bless others and by the time of my return, you're going to be blessed for what you did. But don't expect it to come from these people. Expect it to come from me. And throughout, you find the same thing. Luke 19. Verse 17 to 19. It's the same thing. It's the resurrection of the just. And he said unto him, Well, thou good servant, because thou hast been faithful in a very little, have authority over ten cities. The second came, saying, Lord, thy pound hath gained five pounds. He said likewise to him, Be thou also over five cities. So they're being rewarded with positions in the kingdom. It doesn't say that, but in addition to whatever good works they have, they're going to be rewarded for that. This is the resurrection of the just. We're used to looking at it from Prototokos' perspective. Yes. Of, uh, that, once that, that door is closed, it's sure, a rapture. Sure. These people <coughs> lived 2,000 years ago mm -hmm did what they were going to do, their fate is sealed, their reward is waiting for them. At a certain time, the Lord's going to return and give them a reward. They're going to be incorporated into the kingdom. So the kingdom is a hierarchy. It's a stratified levels of authority and life in the realms of light. Which begins when everyone gets their reward at the second at coming. At the second coming. Now, <clears throat> scripture indicates after the new covenant saints are rewarded, the old covenant saints will be resurrected. The Lord is going to speak and the saints will come forth out of the earth. So <clears throat> all the new covenant saints get their reward first, their positions first, 
And after the last one receives his reward, the Lord will in turn and speak and the old covenant saints will be resurrected to life. He talks about that. John, fifth chapter, verse 25. Verily, verily, I say unto you, the hour is coming, and now is, <clears throat> when the dead shall hear the voice of the Son of God, and they that hear shall live. So he's talking about all the saints that have died, old covenant saints that died, they don't go to heaven, they go into the heart of the earth, to the paradise region called Abraham's bosom. That's where everybody <coughs> under the old covenant who's righteous goes. <coughs> And then he's talking about the time after the New Covenant saints have had their position, their rewards and everything. He's going to speak and <clears throat> they are going to come forth. Now, when we say they come out of the earth, mm -hmm. their spirits are coming from the new earth. Mm -hmm. That's out of the earth. That's what, you're, you're, what you mean. Right? Yes. Not that, <laughs> forgive me, that the... Uh, destroyed bodies from 2,000 years ago, which are still in the physical earth, is doing anything. Well, the bodies and the spirits are going to be united in a glorified They're state, recombined. in a mortal state. Okay. And okay. then that looks like it's coming out of the earth. That's what you're saying. It is. Okay. Yeah, turn to Isaiah 26, 19. Thy dead men shall live. My dead body, I'm not doing the italic stuff because that's not giving you what's being said. My dead, thy dead shall live. My dead body shall they arise. With, in other words, you're saying with these dead men, he's going to rise. Awake and sing, ye that dwell in the dust. For thy do is as the dew of herbs, and the earth shall cast out the dead. So when he speaks, <clears throat> he's talking to the earth to bring forth the dead. And they're going to come forth. And they're going to come forth not from in a corrupted state, they're going to come forth in a glorified state. So, for those who are standing on the earth at that time, mm -hmm. next to the Lord, what he's doing, what he's just said here, mm -hmm. they're looking ahead of them, they just suddenly see all these old, uh, uh, old Testament saints appearing fully recombined in the glorified state. Yes. Okay. Yes. Turn to Job, because Job understood this. Job 19, 25 to 27. <clears throat> For I know that my Redeemer liveth, and that he shall stand at the latter day upon the earth. And though after my skin worms destroy this body, talking about decomposing, yet in my flesh shall I see God, whom I shall see for myself, and mine eyes shall be old, and not another, though my reins be consumed within me. So he's talking about after he dies, he decomposes, body goes back to the ground, to the dust, 
the Lord is going to speak and he's going to be brought forth in an immortal state. <clears throat> and uh, this is what he's looking forward to. He understood. Matter of fact, all the old covenant saints, I believe they were all under the Abrahamic covenant, so they were all taught, taught the same. They were taught the resurrection. And participating in the resurrection would be a time in which, though they were dead, they'd be brought back from a corrupted state that they had when they were alive to a permanent immortal state. Which brings us to the next principle. Scripture teaches that the resurrection will equip the old covenant saints, those under the Abrahamic covenant, full access to the earth as the angels, and I would also incorporate other life forms, have full access to, access to the earth. You have... Sorry, other life forms, all life forms, or any specific that you're thinking? All the nations, in other words. The, um, the indigenous inhabitants of the subterranean oh, region okay. have full access to the earth. The earth is, is given to us as not a three-dimensional sphere. Mm. It's given to us as a pluralistic um, um, matrix. matrix compilation okay. uh, compartmentalized with different races, but each race has full access so to the fullness of okay. except the human race, which okay. is on the surface. <clears throat> Turn to Isaiah 42, verse 5. <clears throat> Thus saith God the Lord, he that created the heavens and stretched them out, he that spread forth the earth and that which cometh out of it, everything on the surface came from the subterranean regions. He that giveth breath unto the people upon it, the human race, and spirit to them that walk therein. The word therein in the Hebrew is walk within it. So those that walk within it have full access to it. And the interior is described as being instead of limited to walking on a level plane, you can walk up it, okay. down it, around it. Right. Because you have the ability to co comport yourself in a three dimensional right. capacity. As opposed to two dimensional. Yeah. That's why it talks about Satan walks up and down in the earth. Right. That's right. what he told the Lord. Where you where you come from? I've been walking up and down in the earth. Subterranean regions, he's been walking on all levels. Surface region, he's been walking on the surface level. Remember that book with the Norwegians, the, the, the father and the son oh, <coughs> went into the smoky book. guy. Yes, yeah, yeah. smoky guy, that's it. <coughs> Did you see anywhere in there, because I didn't, where it appeared to you that while they were in the interior, they had greater muscle strength, for example. They could run faster, they could breathe more. Did you, did you get any sense of that? Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. You all, have you ever read um, the Bowie Ledens Drill Society? It's on my list. <laughs> I've got a long list. <laughs> yeah, it talks about the Vril Yard, which are... Okay, yes. yes I, know what you mean. I know what you mean, yes. Yeah. Yes. Right. Bear with me if I get if I don't get a question out, I just mumble. So, Mr. Jones, it says he gives breath to those that walk on the surface and spirit to them to walk therein. Mm -hmm. The spirit that he gives them to walk therein, where they have before he gives them spirit. Well, when he created them, they became spirit. 
Just like when he created man. The breath came into man, made him what he is. Okay, all right. So it's talking about the, 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 what comprises each race. But uh, going back to your question, in Bulwer Lytton's uh, The Rural Society, it talks about the Vrilya, which is a race in the subterranean, have the, had developed the ability to tap into the Earth's energies through a pole that they carried. This pole was able to translate energy directly from the soil, from the ground, into the individual. <clears throat> and what they did they procreate just like humans and everybody else. What they teach their children how to harness this energy at a very young age. And they show the children with, with, these, with this pole and they're going around and um, doing tremendous uh, powerful things mm -hmm. because they've mastered this particular capacity. What you'd call sorcerer, I guess. So then what you just said underlines the limitation of Adamic man on the surface, in that he can only breathe so much, his muscles only hold so much, so far and forth. Everybody else is superior to him in that they can manipulate their surroundings to give them greater strength. Yeah, Adamic Man is the lowest thing that was ever brought forth. Yeah. And whenever you read any encounter with anything supernatural, it's always greater than man. Always. Which brings us to the next principle. The scripture teaches at this point the resurrection they will be they will receive not only full access to the earth they will receive a translation into the body that will enable them to fully access the things of earth. Formerly, the body was flesh, uh, uh, afar, <coughs> but the body that they're going to be given at the resurrection is going to be an, be an angelic-like body. Luke 20, verse 34 to 36. I think we're going to read it, but let me ask a question. Is yes. it going to be a terrestrial body? Yes. Okay. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Jesus asks a question, he responds. Verse 34. Jesus answering said unto them, The children of this world, or the children of this age, marry and are given in marriage. But they which shall be, uh, shall be accounted worthy to attain that age. So he's talking about the conditions that will be prevalent at the time that these individuals experience the, re the resurrection. I'm going to connect them with an age that will fully accommodate everything that's been promised to them. They which shall be accounted worthy to attain that world and the resurrection from the dead neither marry nor are given in marriage. Neither can they die anymore for they are equal unto the angels and are the children of God being the children of the resurrection. Now the word equal means, it comes from a Greek term, isangolos, <laughs> which means angel-like. So they will take on the demeanor of angelic beings who are created for the fullness of the habitation of the domain uh, we call Earth. In other words, the human race is not designed for the fullness of habitation of the Earth because man wasn't designed to be a legitimate inhabitant of the oh, Earth. Yeah, He's designed to be a custodian <laughs> over the ground, put in a physical body which was 
low level to begin with, created from A4, the leavings. And, I mean, he's created to be the janitor. And uh, that's the way he's functioned. At so this point, he's going to be brought up to a level at which he, he exhibits nobility. He is able to comport himself in the fullness of the Earth matrix. Right, as all the other uh, species and whatever are. So that body that you're referring to, which he receives at the second resurrection, mm -hmm. lasts until the Revelation 20. One, the eternal state at the the great white throne. At the beginning of the great white throne, <coughs> that body disappears. No. No, his body is eternal. He's not going to be at the great white throne judgment. He will be as an observer. Okay. You're okay. thinking yes. about the people that are going to be born human. Gonna, yes, 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 yes. Okay. So, Brother Jones, you're yes. talking about his terrestrial body being eternal. Yes. Okay. Yes. It's built for an eternal earth. When this one passes away, he's just going to transit to the new earth. <laughs> Duh. <laughs> Why didn't you tell me that? You just let me stammer. And... I, was, I was hiding it from you. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go on. <clears throat> hmm. Scripture teaches, although they have now the freedom and glory and the mortality of angels, they can never enter into the heavens. Why? Because they're never born of the Spirit. <clears throat> John, third chapter, verse 3. Gospel of John, third chapter, verse 3. I'm closing with this. So, Mr. Jones, that means they're going to be single dimensional beings. No, plural. They, they're multidimensional. Yep. Okay. But from the earth matrix, yes. never be able to transit beyond the earth matrix yeah. into the heaven. So they, they, they <coughs> match those who are currently in the interior, in their capabilities. Yes. John 3, 3, Jesus answered, said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. <coughs> Verse 5, Jesus answered, Verily, verily, I say unto thee. So when he says verily, verily, he says truly. This is, this is it. There's no variation in this truth. I say unto thee, except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. You can't enter into the kingdom of heavens unless you're born again. The kingdom of heavens is a primary creation which manifests its influence throughout the secondary creation, but <clears throat> the secondary creation cannot come up to the level of the primary creation. And in that respect, <clears throat> that's why John, John the Baptist understood, he understood this more than anybody else, sure. that he could never enter into the bridal position. Uh, he could never enter the kingdom of the heavens. That's why he's called the transition prophet. That he, Jesus said, <clears throat> The prophets and the law were until John. Now the kingdom is preached. So you can't transit if you, were, if you come under that era into participating in the new covenant era. It's not happening because the Holy Spirit is not designated for anybody from that previous era. Mm. But when we see John the Baptist's followers mm -hmm. encountering and looking at Jesus Christ's followers. Are John the Baptist's followers able to be born again? Some were. Two of them left and went to Jesus. So since John the Baptist is limited, he can't be born again. Mm -hmm. All those that John the Baptist taught should have understood exactly the point that you just made, which was <coughs> to transfer or to translate into the body of Christ would be the greatest possible thing they could have comprehended at that point in time. Yeah, I think John the Baptist, he made several statements about that. But what happened was, John the Baptist, basically, the uh, parameters that the Father gave John the Baptist encompassed only the Old Covenant. Sure. So his followers would have been under the Abrahamic Covenant, just like he was. Even though they transferred into the body of Christ? 
some would volunteer to, but the majority of them would remain right. his okay. followers. Okay. Yes. Of men born of a woman, there hath raised nothing, none greater than John the Baptist. Yep. Say, he who is least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than him. So now, John the Baptist, having, having that nomenclature, given that title, knowing he can't translate, he can't go through the born again experience, he's the greatest. It, explain his greatness to us, Mr. Jones. Well, it's talking about his righteousness. He didn't say he's the greatest. He says nobody's been greater than he. He's giving comparison. The greatest under the Abrahamic covenant, John the Baptist, is the person who is least in the kingdom is greater than the greatest of the old covenant greats. But without, without me getting thrown in the fire, John the Baptist is greater than Abraham. Understanding, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Jesus would say, Get Abraham is not, there's nobody greater, Get a rope. has risen greater than John the Baptist. Teach that in Sunday. <laughs> okay. I believe he said that because John the Baptist had the greatest understanding of all the old Well, he Bible. absolutely knew what he was not being allowed to partake sure, of. Sure. Yes. He was fitted for that role. Yes. He understood the bride. Most Christians don't. He says, I'm friends of the bride, bridegroom. I'm, I'm, enjoy, I'm enjoying, I'm joyful to see the bridegroom and the bride. So he's a witness that the disciples of Christ were qualifying for the bride position. They're called the children of the bride chamber. Mm. The bride chamber is the place where the bride prepares herself. Yes. You don't become the bride in heaven. You become the bride here on earth. Yes. While well, you're desired to be the, the bride. He understood, I believe, more than anybody else that walked this earth. But he understood that he could never participate. Sure. And so Jesus understood, knowing what he understood, gives us his high commendation. Yes. 